In today's video, we're going to be discussing the difference between being able to turn that even par round into an under par round. So as you could see in the previous clip, I think that one of the most important factors into doing that is to actually make sure that you give yourself the best opportunities by choosing the right targets for your approach shots. So for this first hole, we have a pretty long iron, it is an uphill elevated green and it is the first hole of the day. The best place for your ball to finish on this hole and as I just said, finish not start. Obviously your starting line depends a lot on the shape of your ball flight but the best place for you to finish on this hole would be towards the left side of this pin. Not only would this give you an uphill putt, but it would also allow for more margins of error versus if you were to miss towards the right side of the screen, as you could see in the previous clip. Oh, so speed. Oh, wow. It's faster than I thought it was. Really? This reminds me a lot of Boise. <laughs> Geese poop everywhere. Moving on to the next hole, par 5, 510 yards. So as I said before, obviously tee shots are very important, but tee shots is more of a layup shot, especially on a par 5. You can see on this hole, there is a bunker down the left side. There are some skinny trees down the right side, which really it's going to be pretty hard for you to get stuck behind those trees unless you get pretty unlucky. So there is quite a lot of space out here. So what you really want to do is just get the ball out there and really just give yourself a chance to especially because it's a 510 yard par 5 i wasn't really thinking that i was going to be able to get on on two with a water hazard in front anyway as you can see here second shot is just a layup so with par fives don't put yourself in too much pressure to hit the best drive to hit the best layup shot because the more pressure you put on your drive the worse of a shot you're going to hit and you don't necessarily have to try and hit it with all your might just because it's a par five just get it out there especially when it's a three shot hole so after you've hit your two quote-unquote layup shots, now you have your approach shot into the green. Here is where you can really see what is the chances of you making a birdie on this hole. So one of the things that I'm going to be working on is to be more aggressive with my wedges. I do tend to play too safe, which is good for the longer clubs, but with my wedges, this leaves me with too long of a putt coming in for birdie, whereas if you look at most of my shots with my wedges, I do have the right distances. I just tend to play too safe and give myself too long of a birdie putt. So this is something that I'm working on personally, but obviously one of the things that you need to analyze is versus the first hole where I was hitting a 5 iron and we were playing more safe towards the center of the green, this is a hole where you can go for the pin. Even though the pin is tucked left, which for me felt a little bit difficult to go for the pin because obviously being the tendency of having a draw shot, it does look like you should aim more towards the center of the green. However, because you're hitting a wedge, it is not going to have much shape anyway. And the difference between aiming to the center of the green and aiming to the pin for a hole like this with a short club could be the difference between making a birdie and a par. I used to have the problem of being much too aggressive and giving myself very bad positions if I were to miss because of my much too aggressive play. So because of that, I kind of went to a much smarter way of playing. However, now with my skills being better than they were before, I do need to improve my ability to choose when to be more aggressive like I said in the previous hole. On a hole like this, it is a long par 3, it is uphill, there are bunkers all around the green. It is obviously much more advisable to play the smarter shot. 
So for this hole, I could have gone with the hybrid because it is playing about 183 yards because it's uphill. However, I knew that with a hybrid, I had more margin of error versus hitting this 5 iron. And even though I might be a little bit short, being short and putting uphill is better than being in a bunker on this hole. So going from shooting a score like even par to under par also depends a lot. Number one, of course, it depends a lot on the golf course, but also it depends a lot on timing. You need to choose when you're going to be aggressive to try and make those birdies. A hole like this is obviously not one of those holes because if you were to hit it bad and to miss it, you're going to end up going from making pars to making bogeys or even worse. Therefore, like I said, the approach shot is important but you need to be realistic to know when you need to be aggressive and when you don't because that is going to be the difference between you shooting an even par score and making those birdies when you have the opportunity to. So I don't know if you've been paying attention to the distances, but this is a pretty long course. We're also playing from the tips and we're playing in California so there's not much roll. So we're hitting more carry distance here, much more like my game when I play in Malaysia versus when I first came to the US and we played in Texas where the grounds are a lot harder and they just release a lot more. So playing on this course and hitting approach shots with 6 irons and 5 irons, you need to be realistic to know that pars are going to be good scores. Of course, you have to take advantage of the shorter holes and that is when you can really go for your birdie opportunities, which is what I was saying before with regards to timing and choosing when to be aggressive. But you need to know that especially because the green conditions aren't the best either, certain holes you need to play conservatively. This does not mean that we're not trying to make birdies on the longer holes, but we need to know that if we do not make a birdie, we're still going to make a par. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is kind of what I was talking about in terms of approach shot being important to scoring. Obviously, the closer the proximity to the hole, the more opportunities for birdie, the more opportunities for birdie, the more you're going to make them. However, you need to be realistic because some courses when you're just hitting long irons into every green, you're not going to have that many birdie opportunities. Now looking at this hole compared to the previous hole, the previous hole was over 400 yards and this one is only 340 yards, you're definitely going to play this hole more aggressively than the previous hole. Primarily because you know that you're going to have a shorter iron into the green. So obviously when you have a 6 iron in your hand versus a 52 degree wedge, you're going to be much more aggressive in terms of your aiming with the 52 degree wedge. So you shouldn't have to think too much, you should just go for the pin if you have the ability to and you feel confident with it because honestly at the end of the day what's important is that you feel confident and you feel comfortable with the club selection and the target of your choice. So I hit that shot good and exactly where I wanted to but it ended up being a little bit too far and I think that especially with the green conditions it was just a little bit hard to spin the ball on this day but as we all know with golf or at least I hope we all know with golf we can't really control the outcome all we can do is try to hit the best shot in a given moment I hit a good 52 degree wedge there I just didn't hit it as close as I thought it was going to be even though it was a good shot So moving on to the next hole which again is another 5 iron into a green. So this is a par 3 and for some reason I do not really know why I think it was just the way that the hole looked to me. I felt like the right side was going to be a very difficult chip. Obviously I've never played this golf course so I didn't really know. But actually the right side is a lot friendlier than the left side because I did not realize that there's a big ridge in the center of the green that goes downhill from the left to the right. So if you were to miss it right, you would have an uphill chip. This was just a hole that did not feel comfortable to me because I felt like I could not miss it right and obviously you could not miss it left. So this was kind of a guidey shot. It was not a very good shot. And this is what happens when you don't make the decision before you hit it. You're not really sure over the ball what you're going to be doing. You're just kind of thinking about where you don't want to go versus where you want to go. And you know, we're all going to do that every now and then, especially when you have a long iron into a par 3 where the green looks pretty narrow and you know you don't have much room for error. Like I said before, we need to be realistic. We need to know that we are going to make mistakes. Especially when you're hitting long irons into the greens all day, you are eventually going to hit a bad shot. That's just the reality of it. The only way to make up for that is to make birdies on the shorter holes, 
which is what I was talking about before, being more aggressive on the shorter holes. It might not always pay off, but you know what? At least you know that even if it does not pay off, you followed the plan. Sometimes the plan just doesn't work out. And sometimes when you think that you're doomed, weird things can happen. That is just golf. So up to this point, I've made 7 pars. I don't know if you can tell, but I've had quite a lot of long approach shots into this 9 on this golf course. And there aren't that many birdie opportunities for me out here. Especially playing from the tips, I mean obviously I could have moved up the tee box and hit shorter clubs into the green. But I was playing from the tips because I wanted to and because it's fun. So anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes par is going to be a good score the only two holes that i should have taken more advantage of was probably hole two and hole four which is the par five and the short par four because i was hitting wedges into those greens other than that i did give myself a few good birdie opportunities considering i'm hitting six and five irons however you're not always going to make 15 and 18 footers the fact that i've given myself those birdie opportunities was good enough especially with the greens being kind of bumpy and really hard to read in my opinion making those putts in itself the percentage of even a pga tour pro making it is so low getting frustrated over the fact that you're missing those and you're, the fact that you're not making birdies is not going to positively affect your game you need to step back and realize that even for me i realized that you know there just wasn't that many birdie opportunities out here especially because i was hitting such long clubs into the green so making birdies is important but like i said before some courses a par 72 is a par 72 play it for pars wait for the birdies to drop and if they don't 72 is never a bad score personally for me I think including this last hole which you're gonna see soon but I'm gonna have a wedge into this green, I believe that a score of 33 would have been a really good score for me because I only had 3 approach shots using wedges into these greens. So considering that I would stiff all those wedges or make all the putts, 33 on this 9 would have been a really good score and again I'm saying that is not me saying that that is the best possible score that I can shoot. However, if you had watched my vlog where I tried to birdie every single hole, this is not a realistic course for me to do that on. Because honestly, if you're hitting 5 irons and 6 irons into every green, making pars is good. Of course, if you've watched my other vlogs, you would know that I always say this, you need to cater what your definition of a par is to you. Making 9 bogeys on this course might be good for you. It obviously depends on your skill level. We're always trying to hit the best shots that we can. However, for some courses, it is really just a good score to make pars. And I think that you can see over here, this is a great example. And sometimes we set way too big of expectations for ourselves and we try to go out there and we think that making 9 pars is not good enough and we should have made more birdies. But when we go back and really analyze it, we see that we really only had 3 realistic chances to make a birdie. And like I said before, no two courses are created equal. Obviously, it would change depending on what tee box you're playing from. If I were playing from another tee box, that might change the way that this course looked to me. However, for this course, 33 would have been a really good score in my books and it would have almost been quote unquote perfect golfed for this golf course for the conditions and for the way it was playing so just remember no two courses are created equal yes we're always trying to make birdies we're trying to do our best however be realistic give yourself the best chances make sure you choose the right targets with your approach shots 
and give yourself the best chance to score well while having fun and making golf, which is a very frustrating game, as fun and as stress-free as possible.